Joyful blessings. This is Kaylin Castell, and I am super excited to share with you about this October 2nd, 2024 Libra annular eclipse new moon. And one of the things that's very amazing about this eclipse is that it's aligned with a star in the constellation of the priestess called Purima, and it is known as the star of prophecy. So we're going to look at how we are in this a time of prophecies coming to fruition because prophecies are possibilities. We'll talk more about that. And also because it's the Libra aspect, the recognition that you are another myself or um, uh, uh, that I am another you. And we'll talk more about that as well. And so we're seeding the magical wonders of relational bliss first with self and then with others in this amazing eclipse energy so the um this isn't a quote from abraham lincoln who said the best way to predict your future is to create it so prophecy and prediction happen um come true usually come true when either we are focusing on a, a result that we truly want and taking action towards creating that or we're not paying attention we're not changing things and so a certain result is happens uh, because we didn't take the time to change if it's a more negative type of prophecy. Now, um, the annular eclipse is a ring of fire and we can see it's like a cauldron. It looks definitely like a cauldron here. We also um, want to focus on the fact that this is a Libra eclipse and it has a lot to do with how we relate to one another and to uh, the aspects of love. So Ram Das tells us that unconditional love really exists in each of us. It is part of our deep inner being. It's not, I love you for this or that reason. It's love for no reason, love without an object. And love is all. And we're going to speak more into this as we go, because this is, has, love has the power to change everything and to make sure that the prophecies we want to come true, come true. So here's a, a chart of the Eclipse on October 2nd, I uh, uh, created for Tucson, Arizona, where I am. And uh, we see the sun, the moon, and black moon Lilith all at 10 degrees Libra. Um, Mercury's at 11, Juno's at 18, almost 19. The south node is at six. And Mars is square, all of this uh, at, at 15. Cancer, 46, very close to the star Sirius, also a star that has a lot to do with how we are living our life and, and lets us, um, it's the brightest star in the sky. So it's pretty powerful activation. And uh, the thing we want to focus on right now, though, is that Black Moon Lilith is, uh, what is Black Moon Lilith? So some people may not know what this is. It is a location in the sky. We're going to see how it's located as part of the lunar apogee in a moment. And, and the apogee is when the moon is furthest away from the earth. And then um, how it's all, all, all nearly opposite the moon at perigee, perigee meaning when the moon is closest to the earth. And so this eclipse is an apogee full moon, meaning the moon is far away from the earth. Hence why it is an annular solar eclipse, because the moon is far so far away from the earth it's not big enough to literally cover the full face of the sun we'll see more about that in a moment so black moon lilith is said to represent our deepest most repressed desires that yearn to be expressed so these can be um the things that are most amazing about us that we haven't necessarily figured out how to bring forth into this world it can also be about the darkest parts of ourselves that we're most often afraid to acknowledge or where we feel criticized or misunderstood. So if we have those aspects going on, so it's it's that shadow piece. And really, literally, when the moon is covering the sun, we, we're seeing uh, the shadow. Uh, we're, we're literally looking at the shadow. So the black moon Lilith in Libra is teaching us how to find balance within and with others when we are willing to embrace and transform our shadow. And sometimes we need to embrace the shadow because it's the best parts of ourselves. Sometimes we need to embrace the shadow so we can transmute and transform 
the darker parts of ourselves, the wounded parts of ourselves, the parts of ourselves that uh, are really seeking to be uh, brought into greater awareness so that they can be utilized in the best ways possible. So in this alchemical eclipse cauldron, and the cauldron began with the full moon lunar, partial lunar eclipse that happened on uh, September 17th of 2024. And that eclipse was so amazing. I have talked to so many people and plus myself, it was one of the most powerful eclipses I've ever experienced. And it, it I, I really wasn't expecting that <laughs> to, to be so affected, to feel the vibrational energy so powerfully. So maybe some of, of others of you listening to this will have had that experience as well. So um, here we have the earth and this is the path of the moon around the earth. And when the moon is closest to the earth, it's the perigee. And when it's the furthest away from the earth, it's the apogee. And Lilith is located at uh, the point of where the apogee would be. And so uh, that is also called the empty focus or the black moon. It's not really an actual thing. It is just a location in space. So just to reiterate that piece of it. So this is, uh, in this eclipse cauldron, with the black moon Lilith being so strong, we have an opportunity to heal our wounds around all our relationships, including our relationship with self, with others, with the earth, with life, with the divine. And these are some questions you might want to ask yourself. Are you seeking approval from others? Or maybe you're not consciously seeking approval for others. So tuning in to see, is that something that might be happening for you? Are you giving up who you are to be in relationship with anyone? And I have done this. I've given up who I am to be in relationship. I have witnessed others giving up themselves to be in relationship to others. And especially people with strong Libra, tend, that tends to be a pattern for them. And they can be aware of it at, at a moment and then they fall back into it. So this is an opportunity to become even more aware of that. How can you let go of the need to find yourself through others and be your own best partner? Because when we can really partner with ourselves in the best ways, then we have the ability to be a great partner and to be in a great partnership with another who can meet us where we need to be met and where we are vibrating and activating. So um, often in the Libra realm, the partners are reflecting to us where we're at and what, what opportunities we have and places to grow. And then how can we restore harmony and balance within changing the world within and around us? Because when we change the world within us, the world around us will change according to Wayne Dyer, who I love that quote. Anyway, also in the High, I Heart Huckabee's movie, Jude Law asks, how am I not myself? This is an amazing question to ask during this eclipse. How am I not myself? And the answer to that could be many different things, but sometimes we're not being ourselves to please others or to uh, make things okay or and that and uh, and then we give up being who we are for that. So a, another great question to consider in this eclipse cauldron as we get to the eclipse, the October 2nd eclipse and beyond. Now Libra's blocks to authentic relationship. Um, include afraid being afraid to be vulnerable. Um, so sometimes people push a relationship away because it requires that they be vulnerable and they don't really want to do that, or they stay in a superficial relationship because they don't want to be vulnerable. And, uh, and then the relationship really isn't all that fulfilling. Um, and other blocks can be terrified to be alone, even if the relationship is miserable. I've done this. I know people who've done this. Uh, it took me a while, but finally it was just like, nope, this is not, I can't do this anymore. And what happened as a result of that is it took a few tries, but I got to the place where I was able to be with somebody who got, who, uh, who gets who I am. And we are um, about to celebrate 18 years of marriage this month, October, the month of October, and it's better than ever. And I didn't know that that was even possible. So uh, I just want to say that as an example. I often refer to my husband as my BAG, best husband ever, because he is my third husband. <laughs> and uh, my other two marriages were ended by the time we were at this point in our relationship. So it's very true. And then um, surrendering to uh, others' needs or desires, perhaps not even aware of your own personal needs, 
that aren't being met. And, uh, or maybe you would start to become aware, but you're so in the habit of meeting other people's needs or desires or your partner's needs or desires that it, you don't even know how to ask for what your own needs are. So um, that is a challenge that if you have that going on, maybe this is an opportunity to seed a new way of being in relationship around that. And then sacrificing authentic self to be in relationship to others, uh, your true self, what's really who, who you really are so that you can be, make, keep the peace in the relationship. Uh, it's like, mm, yeah, not necessarily a great way to be in relationship. And then showing, um, busy showing up for what you believe others want from you, not showing up for yourself. So these are some things to tune into and to see as the, are these shadows showing up for you, um, in your life. And can you now with the, um, this being in this eclipse cauldron, begin to transmute and transform that. So what would it take to support and value all the different perspectives we encounter, recognizing we benefit from all the insights and wisdom from all the places on the wheel of life? And this is the astrological wheel, <laughs> uh, like a round table. And when all of these aspects all of the different signs and planets and all are being equally heard and have an equal place around the table. Uh, not unlike King Arthur's round table where all the knights sat in equal relationship to him. Um, so the idea is that we can take all of these different perspectives and hear them equally. Maybe we don't agree with them. Maybe we don't necessarily understand them. Um, but when we're open and we're listening, then there's such a great richness that comes into our understanding and our experience of being with life. So sitting around uh, the circle and being open to hearing everybody's perspective and uh, and valuing it. Maybe it's uh, not the same as yours, but it's as equally important as yours and yours is as equally important as everyone else's. So here's the annular solar eclipse map showing us where it's going to be visible with the, the dotted line in the center being the, the path of totality. I will put this link in the show notes for those who want to know where it is in relationship to you. It is visible in Southern North America, very Southern North America, much of South America, um, and the Pacific and the Atlantic and the Ar Antarctic, but just a very small band and very, very small band across um, the southern tip of South America. <clears throat> we'll be able to see that um, the total annular solar eclipse. Other places will just see a partial bit of the eclipse. Now, coming back to the star Porima that I mentioned in the very beginning, this is the star of prophecy. And so we, here's a, a map of showing us how um, the sun and the moon are in the eclipse um, aspect. And it's with the star Porma on the shoulder of the priestess constellation. So as I mentioned, this eclipse is happening at 10 degrees Libra. Porma is at 10, like 28, 20, 20, 10 degrees and 28 minutes. There's uh, 30 degrees in a sign and 60 minutes in a, a degree. So it's about halfway, 10 and a half degrees so, or so. And it's so close to where the sun and the moon are. The sun and the moon act as transmitters. So they're transmitting the mysteries of this star directly to the earth. Such a powerful activation that is taking place. And we'll speak more into that in a moment. But just so, just to make sure that everybody understands that an annular solar eclipse is what happens when the sun and the moon are in an exact alignment with the earth. So it's like the earth, the sun, the moon, well, actually the earth, the moon, the sun come into this alignment and they are also aligned with uh, Purima and it's unlocking the prophecies and the, the possibilities that are connected to the prophecies in this eclipse. Um, but the moon is farther away from the earth. So it's not bigger. It's not big enough. It's, it's basically smaller than the sun. So from earth's perspective, it, it's, it becomes a ring of fire or a bright ring of light around the annulus of the moon. 
and it's surrounding the dark disk that's surrounding the dark disk of the moon. And I will put a link into more of the magic and um, wow energy of an annular solar eclipse in the show notes for those who would like to have more of an insight around that. Now here we are uh, the, with Porama again. We see her on the shoulder of the uh, of the priestess constellation, and the reason that we speak into this as um, the priestess constellation, as also known as Virgo, but it uh, <clears throat> but there's a seasonal sign also known as Virgo, and so we clearly this is the seasonal season of Libra is overlaying this constellation, so it gets confusing. And these seasonal signs move one degree every 72 years, uh, taking about 2,160 years to go through 30 degrees of the sky of uh, or of a constellation, if the constellation is around 30 degrees, and about 2,590 years to come back to a starting place. So this is what we are really um, remembering now is something that was forgotten. And the reason that uh, this constellation is called Virgo and the seasonal sign is called Virgo because they, the, the seasonal sign of Virgo was with this constellation. So we're looking at how to change the language so that we can really understand the difference because it gets so confusing. Now, as I mentioned before, prophecies are possibilities. And in this ring of fire eclipse, it is energizing the prophecies we are holding with intention and attention and um, from the place of our heart, the, the one heart. And the Hopi prophecies speak to the one-hearted path and also the two-hearted path. So the one-hearted path is the path of peace and the two-hearted path is the path of destruction. So what we choose ideally energizes a world based in peace, plenty, and illumination for all life on planet Earth reminding us that we are the ones we've been waiting for it we must choose this for this prophecy to come true this is something we must choose um hopi grandfather martin who i had the amazing um a miraculous opportunity to meet back in uh, 2008 and to go to prophecy rock with uh and we're going to see more about prophecy rock in a moment he speaks of this um, great purification of the social and ecological disruption that will eventually bring a time of lasting peace over the world's people. But before that, we will go through the eye of the storm. And it's also a time when humanity will choose either the path of annihilation or the path of everlasting life. And I will put the link to the article about that uh, in the show notes. And then all other Hopi spiritual leaders spoke about a prophecy of when they would speak to the leaders in a great house of mica with rules and regulations to solve the world's problems without war and that did happen and has been when they went to the um uh uh nato Na not nato yeah well when yeah so they went to speak and and they had an opportunity to share about this prophecy and i'll put a link about that also in the show notes more of the details of that um uh so the um, other thing for us to keep in mind is this is a time to focus and act on the vision of peace, plenty, and illumination from the one hearted vibrating with pure love so that this prophecy comes true. Um, and because this is the one we want to come true, not the one of destruction. Now here's prophecy rock and <clears throat> the uh, I've been there. I got, as I said, got to go with grandfather Martin. It was pretty amazing um, or we met with him and then went there. I can't remember exactly how that came down, but we got to be there in, uh, back in 2008. And so, um, this is showing the path of the two hearted and it ends in destruction and the path of the one hearted where it ends in, in peace and plenty and illumination. This is showing when the white man arrived, this is great spirit. And this, um, is also, so we can see the path, so we can see another version of it here. And so basically the upper path is that path of the two-hearted and destruction. And it's about being driven by power over others and greed. And a two-hearted person thinks with their head rather than their heart. And the lower path is the one-hearted where we're leading to harmony and balance by thinking with the heart or by acting from the heart. 
the short line that returns to the straight path of life that is right here or right here um, is where we can come back to the path of the one hearted. But then if, if we go past that, that's the last opportunity to come back to the path of the, of the one hearted. And I don't know where we are at with that, according to the Hopi prophecy. So, um, but hopefully um, we are not on the path where the upper road disintegrates and dissipates, <laughs> but we are on the path of the one hearted where we will experience um, the uh, crone, the corn that will grow in abundance and great spirit returns and the path of life continues forever. So at, in this eclipse time, we could be asking these questions. Am I living on the one hearted path? What does that look like? How does it feel? And if I'm not, how could I live on that path? Am I living with my heart open, forgiving, grateful, compassionate, and kind, even in challenging times, even when it feels like hell? <laughs> uh, these are the these are questions to be with and to to really um, intend that we are on that one-hearted path. Now there are additional prophecies um, because. Uh, other cu cultures have had similar prophecies. It's not just the Hope, Hopi who's, who said these things. Um, but uh, the people with good, pure hearts who are not afraid to fulfill their destiny of peace and plenty um, now stand at a crossroads whether, to lead, whether we lead ourselves in everlasting life or total destruction and that we're the ones we've been waiting for. We believe that human beings, spiritual power through prayer, is so strong that it decides life on earth. So will this prophecy come true? It's up to us through our spiritual power, through prayer, through ceremony, through intention, through what we're holding and vibrating within our hearts. And love absolutely heals everything and changes everything. So it's through the path of love and vibrating with the one heart. Now the Mayans and the Tibetans speak of this as the age of flowers. And the Caro or Quechua in Peru, in the um, Cusco region, call it the age of peace and illumination, very similar to what the Hopi call it. The ancient Egyptian rites of initiation were patterned on the seeding, budding, blooming, and fruiting of the heart, all about the heart energy. The Mayan calendar saw this as seeding and birthing a new reality. So this is um, <clears throat> basically all kind of fitting into this uh, time of prophecy and possibility. And the planetary alignments and this eclipse cauldron and uh, annular solar eclipse are here to remind us it's time to let go of the past and open our hearts to the cosmic codes that we all carry within, awakening us to the divine love, guiding us toward our destiny when we surrender, allow, and forgive. This is the, our opportunity. This is what this timing is about. This is... Uh, the time we've been waiting for and we're the ones we've been waiting for so this is amazing now in the mayan culture they have a, a term called in la Kesh, and the response is hala ken and basically in la Kesh means i am another yourself you are another myself i am you and you are me and we are one we are all one we are all together we're in this together we are from the same source. We are from the one light. We are one with each other. We are one with everything in the universe. And all it can is the response that essentially means the same thing. And doing harm to anyone or anything is doing harm to ourselves. And so part of what we can remember, and this uh, Libra eclipse is reminding us is you are another me. We are not separate. We are not different. We, but we are having our individual experience and that those around us having their experience is a reflection to us about other possibilities. And so this is just such a magical, amazing time. Now the October new moon in uh, the 13 original clan mothers by Jamie Sams really love her perspective on this uh, she, she is saying this is the clan mother who is weaves the web. And so what is the new web we're weaving? What is the new earth we're weaving? What is the new reality that we're weaving? And it's an annular solar eclipse amplifying the power and intensity of this uh, um, new moon energy. So it has never been more important to tune into what new reality we are weaving. So here's the poem that uh, Jamie Sam shares in her book. 
gossamer thread of life hold me, perched between earth and sky, weaving the web, dreaming the dream through the two worlds I will fly. With you as my mu muse, mother, I create the substance of dreams, allowing the artist within me to fashion my life with esteem. I mold the clay of experiences into a sacred bowl, capturing the essence of living as it sings deep in my soul. Your secrets of creation, mother, have taught me when to destroy the chains that have bound me, limiting the expression of my joy. You have taught me how to labor, giving birth to the visions within, setting them like silver arrows, kindling the fire of creation again so we can kindle and we are in this alchemical cauldron to create a new way of being, a new creative reality, a new earth reality. And just to kind of, as we feel into more of this Libra aspect is uh, I love this song by Billy Joy, B Billy Joel, who says, just the way you are. And he says, don't go changing to try and please me. Uh, and that there's more of this. I'll take you just the way you are. I just want someone that I can talk to. I want you just the way you are. This is what we all would desire and concede as a possibility that we can have a relationship with others, with a beloved other who wants us for who we are and not who they want us to be. Um, I want someone that I can talk to. I want you just the way you are. Oh, but what will it take till you believe in me the way I believe in you? I couldn't love you any better. I love you just the way you are. And the, I will put the link to this song because it could be a great song and doing ceremony with this annular solar eclipse as a way to energize the intention that we can be who we truly are in relationship with others and be valued for that, to be appreciated for that, to be loved for that, and to walk the one-hearted path uh, and not being manipulated and controlled. So I'm going to end with this uh, as a way to um, uh, just remind ourselves that persistent prophecy is a familiar way of assuring the event. So if we want to experience the prophecy of peace, plenty, and illumination in a new earth reality, then our opportunity is to focus our attention and intention on this experience. So I hope you all have an amazing and magical uh, eclipse time as we move towards this annular solar eclipse and beyond.